కాగానే భోజనం భోజనం పెడతా తీసుకెళ్తాం మేము in the two sets of conflicting clips that we just watched one thing is common police officers then why do we applaud them when we see them in films bashing the hell out of villains but we have a problem when the film translates into reality and police does the same thing that we see them and applaud them for what they do in movies <laughs> Hello guys welcome back to legal banter today's video is a continuation of my series titled learning law through films in such videos i explore concepts or provisions of law and simplify their understanding through the medium of films through these videos we also try to understand how such concepts or provisions of law are represented in the indian cinema this video is about police their role and their depiction in cinema Now we understand that the criminal administration of justice rests on three pillars. These three pillars are the police, the judiciary and the jails. It's only when cooperation between these three is done in the most proper manner that the justice system of a country runs. Its success, its efficiency is determined by the smooth working of these three pillars. Out of these three, police is the first and the foremost pillar and therefore it's going to set the ball rolling how police does their job will greatly determine how the judiciary will take up that case and based on that decision what will be the person's custody or punishment that the judiciary may be giving out this video is going to help you understand one where does the police derive its power from what is the source of that power what are the problems with the exercise of that power then we go on to look at three basic provisions that contains or consists of perception of police in a common man's mind the first is the power of police to investigate a matter to go on and carry out investigations and to be able to collect evidence pertaining to that investigation the second aspect that we shall be exploring is power of the police to arrest or detain a person and the third part that we will be looking into which is probably the most controversial of all is the use of force by police whether they use it on a person who is in their custody which in common parlance is termed as custodial violence or it can also go into extreme circumstances which results into encounters that the police tries to justify on various grounds let's understand the source of this power first the source lies in the police act of 1861 as you can rightly understand it's an old law that the british has had made for india because of this old law there are certain reasons which allows the police the excessive use of their power they are able to exploit that because of certain lacunas that exist in this police act which unfortunately so far have not been done away with once you go through the act there are certain aspects that will call out to you first and foremost there is no provision which considers police as a service oriented organization there are no ways to assure quality there are no ways that police is allowed a limited interference in a citizen's life also there is no concept of public accountability which means that police even though there are their public servants they do not have accountability as any other public servant may have another problem that you can identify based on this act is also pertaining to that there are no guidelines to assure legitimate use of power it purely says that the police can use reasonable power but there is no way to justify or quantify what does this reasonable amount to this is usually the reason why we see police sometimes using disproportionate power to combat any risk or any harm that they are trying to prevent you understand the source lies in the law itself another problem with that law is that it is subject to the executive and not to the concept of rule of law we understand that rule of law article 21 becomes the biggest repository article 21 basically says that no person shall be deprived of their right to life and personal liberty except by a procedure established in law the law provides that procedure under the provisions of the code of criminal procedure which i shall be discussing further down but it does not lay down the extent or the limitation of the power of police in exercising those 
rights and that is where the problem lies the police act does not nothing good so far as preventing such limitation of a citizen's right or liberty is concerned another loophole or lacuna that you can identify in the police act is that there are no standards for quality or performance based analysis laid down which means that in no way police officers will be judged on the quality of the service on the quality of the functioning that they are supposed to provide they most commonly end up having targets like any person who is working in an mnc which means which translates in police language is that how many cases were they able to process how many complaints they were able to investigate it all at the end of the day becomes a game of numbers which always reduces the efficiency of police probably the biggest problem that you can call out of the police act is also that there is no concept of democratic policing which means that people or common man have no say in how the police should function to give context to the lacuna i just listed out let us look at the various functions that is expected out of the police the first and the most obvious power is that the power to investigate a matter and to collect evidence pertaining to that investigation crpc exhaustively lays down those provisions so when it comes to initiation of investigation the process of investigation how that entire procedure will unfold you will find that well well elaborated from section 154 to section 176 of the code of criminal procedure specifically in that section 156 talks about beginning of an investigation by a police officer in in a case where you do not need the permission of the magistrate investigation and collection of evidence are the two primary functions that are expected out of the police crpc and the evidence act are very elaborate as to how these steps have to be carried out for example a police officer is required to register an fir for cognizable offences under section 154 it has been held in a popular decision by the supreme court in the case of lalita kumari versus state of up that police officer is duty bound to register fir and cannot be held or allowed to hold preliminary or pre molar investigation before registering the fir this also brings it as a duty on the police officer that he cannot deny procedure for investigation is laid down in section 157 police are not allowed to force a person to give confession or to accept the guilt in pertaining to any offence this is also corroborated with section 25 and 26 of the indian evidence act that completely denounces the admissible value of a statement or confession that a person makes before the police this goes on to build on the presumption that any statement that was given to the police the police had elicited that uh, confession or statement by the use of force this is a presumption that the court is bound to follow a collective reading of these provisions give us an idea of what are the ideal expectations out of a police right from accepting everybody who comes to the police station with registration of a fir or registration of a complaint becomes the first standpoint or touch point for interaction between police and a common man unfortunately in our real life which is also uh, going to motivate a lot of things that we see in our movies we do see police officers failing in this particular role either because they are colluding with the defendant or the alleged accused in that case or they may have their own personal vested interest which does not allow them to register a fir the law presents a very rosy picture it pre- it shows us a very idealistic scenario where whatever is expected out of the police the police will do it diligently however when you realize this being perceived and explored in the indian cinema the situation is opposite to that for example if you take up the movie drishyam a very popular crime thriller that was released a couple of years ago you will realize if you watch that movie closely and you scrutinize that there are various scenarios where the police seems to be misusing their power the first and foremost is that they arrest the person not along only the person but his entire family without any proper paperwork vijay uski family ko aur uske dikhaye hue sare saboot mere samne leke aao 
लेकिन उन्हें उठाएंगे किस चार्ज पे किडनेपिंग मर्डर तो नहीं क्योंकि उसे प्रूव करने के लिए डेढ़ बोरी चाहिए तुम प्रोटोकॉल की चिंता मत करो आई टेक केयर ऑफ बिकॉज इट कंसर्न अ पुलिस कमिश्नर एंड हर सन बींग मिसिंग दिस सीम्स टू ओवरलुक अ लॉट ऑफ प्रोसीजरल रिक्वायरमेंट्स दैट आर एक्सपेक्टेड वेन अ पर्सन इज डिटेन्ड Another lacuna that the movie shows is that they detain a minor which is the youngest child of the character played by Ajay Devgan without the presence of any child witness protection officer. Gussa ji batao ye to mujhe gussa aa jayega aur mujhe gussa aane ke baad main kya karta hu ye to nahi dekha hai Sach batao ye to tujhe bhi maar dalunga main This is a requirement under the Juvenile Justice Act also Thirdly and probably most controversially is the use of force when police officers allowed to use brute force not only on the majors involved in the movie but also on the minor girl this goes on to blatantly show the disregard for both fundamental rights as well as human rights of the persons in custody bata samta but leave it sabko maar dalunga bata Another movie that illustrates the police inaction, complacency, intimidation, use of force, and also resorting to invasive tests is a movie called Talwar. We all know that this movie is based on the real life incident, which was the Noida double murder case that happened in two thousand eight. you will realize what i'm saying probably in the first half of the movie itself the movie where it depicts that the police has come in and they're investigating how the murder transpired when they have come to collect the dead bodies they do not realize first of all that the domestic helps body is on the terrace it is discovered only a couple of days later and that also you realize how complacent and how casual they are they do find a blood smeared handprint on the wall which could have been a very important piece of forensic evidence probably to trace or to whom did those handprints belong to that could have played a very pivotal role in helping the police unfold who's who could have been involved in that murder but as shown in the movie the police are very complacent they keep shifting the responsibility of recording that as an evidence from one officer to the other eventually with rain coming in and the handprint getting disappeared kaise phone kiya tha kaise uh mere paade ko bola tha paade forensic bureau phone kiya tha na kiya tha sir bilkul kiya tha sir lekin us samay sir out going block thi na sir maine suresh ko bola tha sir sir main to aapke sath gaya tha wo pm saab ke bandobast the wo suresh ko bol diya tha maine this also points out to how inactive and how casual the police are shown towards the collection of evidence this is also portrayed in various other movies for example if you have seen the movie no one killed jessica again based on a real life incident of the actual jessica lal murder case that movie also shows how complacent and how casual and how distortive was the role of police in the collection of evidence ha sabrina galbad ho gayi galbad ho gayi madam jo do khali bullets forensically bheji thi na unme se ek bullet jo hai wo badal di gayi badal di gayi ye matlab ye kaise ho sakta hai हो सकता है मैडम सब कुछ हो सकता है इन फैक्ट अनफॉर्चुनेटली पुलिस बाय नॉट फॉलोइंग व्हाट द सीआरपीसी सेज एंड्स अप बिकमिंग दैट एंटिटी दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ ब्रेक्स द एंटायर केस फॉर द प्रोसिक्यूशन जनाब जो दो खाली कारतूस हमने लैब में भेजे थे वो एक ही पिस्टल के थे कारतूस बदल गए जनाब अगर प्रोसिक्यूशन के माने तो मेरे क्लाइंट झूठ बोल रहे हैं प्राइम विटनेसेस झूठ बोल रहे हैं सरकारी अफसर झूठ बोल रहा है प्रोसिक्यूशन केस बिफोर द कोर्ट and we see that happening not only in our movies but in our day to day life as well the police investigation portrayed in the movie talwar is riddled with various defects also shown in the movie is the scenario where the police uses force to elicit 
a confession out of the person. Inspector Ashwin, which was a character played by Irfan, is shown to be intimidating a guy who after that makes a confessional statement. <laughs> This is in direct contrast to section 24 to 26 of the Indian Evidence Act which disallows the police the use of such power to be able to get a confession. This also shows that they go ahead of what the law says, they contradict what the law says in order to ensure that they are able to carry out a narcoanalysis. Narcoanalysis and other such invasive tests are also held unconstitutional by the court in the case of Selvi versus State of Karnataka. The police as shown in the movie seems to be disregarding all of that. The step taken by the police not only contradicts the basis of standard of proof in criminal law which is that a person has to be proven that he committed an offence beyond reasonable doubt. And the second thing that it goes against is section 169 of CRPC which says that if there is lack of evidence or during the investigation the police discovers that the person is likely to have not committed the offence, the police is supposed to release the person and close the case. However, if you see in the movie, even though the police was not able to gather sufficient evidence pointedly towards the culpability of the parents, they still went ahead and prosecuted them in real life as well. Similar scenarios also form the backdrop of other movies like Pink where lack of police cooperation is a big problem that the three protagonists have to overcome. This movie thankfully brings on the concept of zero FIR because of which the police can no more trouble a person when they go to the police station to file a FIR. Another movie is the Jolly LLB franchise. Both movies 1 and 2 which is based on Jolly LLB showcase the inaction and the inefficiency of the police in carrying out proper investigation. Whereas in Jolly LLB 1, the police is seen to be hands in glove with the defendant because he is from an influential wealthy family and therefore they are also trying to intimidate the witnesses trying to help the defendant in eliminating the witnesses. Victim number 6, Sadakan Mishra is alive, sir. And the police files are going to tell him that Inspector Rathi. Whereas in Jolly LLB 2, the entire movie is based on the police officer and his rampant use of force. How he wants to use fake encounters of terrorists to get a promotion and to get more and more eminence in his department. So this was all about the power and function of police to investigate a matter and collect evidence and how in the movies the police strays completely of what the law expects the police to do. This also has a reason why the police image in real life is also very shady. We now move on to the second aspect and another function that the police is asked to do. That function relates to arresting and detaining people in pursuance of law. Now we understand that all of this has to fall under the blanket of article 21. Article 21 allows the detaining of a person, the limitation of a person's life or personal liberty provided it is done according to a legal procedure. We have also seen in cases of Menka Gandhi that no more is this procedure a namesake procedure. So just because the law allows you to do a thing without laying down a standard does not mean that you have rampant indiscriminate powers under that law. You are still accountable on grounds of whether it is justified, reasonable and a fair procedure. Provisions relating to arrest are provided from section 41 to section 60 of the code of criminal procedure. So right from provisions where persons can be arrested with a warrant that is issued by the magistrate, cases where persons can be arrested even without the warrant by the magistrate available, 
the process of arrest and other pursuant provisions are provided adequately in the CRPC. However, when you see movies like Ganga Jal, Dabang, the entire Dabang franchisee, Simba and other such movies, the picture is exactly opposite. Movies like Ganga Jal show the police officers using their power and they become vigilante in themselves and they actually cause the blinding of people who are in their custody. <laughs> This is based on the real Bhagalpur blinding case that had happened many decades ago in Bihar. The vigilanteism is over the top, which our movie tends to like showing because that's what the audience also enjoys. These movies, the, because they show the police officer doing it to be so and because this police officer is the hero, everybody tends to cheer on. Our Bollywood cop is the correct and absolute hero. He will go to any lengths to bring justice to people, even if this means disregarding the law, disregarding the procedure established by law and also the rights of an accused or a person who is yet to be held guilty. Movies like Mardani show the main protagonist taking the law in her own hands and becoming her own judge. Now we may all agree to one fact and we may rather concede to the fact that these movies tend to show the extreme form of how a Bollywood cop is supposed to function. In real life, somewhere our police officers tend to take a lesson from there and that is where the root problem lies. A famous author Oscar Wilde had once said, life imitates art far more than art imitates life. This actually holds true when it concerns our police officers. When we come across actual life cases of police brutality or police disregarding the procedures that are laid down in CRPC or the Indian Evidence Act, somewhere the root cause lies in the depiction of police in the Bollywood movies. All these movies have cemented in a common man's mind a very distorted and a very violent image of a cop. They do not expect the cop to play it down in any manner when it comes to securing justice, whether it means completely disregarding the rule of law, bashing the villains left, right and centre and completely not following the provisions laid down by law. Have you ever wondered if you see the villain doing the exact same thing, killing people for no cause, killing people without following a provision, not being punished for it, will you still cheer that on? I am definite that you will not. It's because the hero of the movie, who also happens to be a police officer, is seen to be becoming a vigilante who is upholding the rights of people, we cheer him on and we like what we see. But we somewhere in the entire process forget the fact that it has a lot to do with how the Bollywood movies show the police officer misusing their power. I hope you liked the video and learned something new. If you like the content, please like and share this video further. If you want to watch more such content, please subscribe to my channel Legal Banter and also press the notification bell so that you are notified the next time I post a video. Thank you so much for watching.